Welcome to another episode of Silicon Minds and Human Hearts. Today we have Aditi Maheshwari from the Microsoft AI team. Aditi, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me over. Can you please introduce yourself? Uh, hi guys, I'm Aditi. I work in Microsoft Azure AI uh, Content Understanding Team. I am a product manager and uh, I'm very excited to be here to be talking to you. Before we go on and what you're doing right now, you have also quite an interesting career path. How, how did you start after, uh, well, interning? Yeah, so <laughs> kind of an interesting one. I interned um, when I graduated. I did my bachelor's in computer science and I interned at Microsoft India. I then spent about four to five years in Microsoft India across different teams. Um, I worked in M365, Dynamics 365 and uh, Azure DevOps. Uh, then I moved to startups to just experience uh, the fast pace that, that was just talked about at that point. And I worked at Rubrik, uh, which is now an IPO uh, company and Harness. And recently I moved to the US, so I am back to Microsoft. And now I'm in the startup within Microsoft, which is the Azure AI so, uh, Foundry Org. Were you always in the, in the AI part of companies? Or how did you get into it? So um, I had like a bit uh, background on that, but um, it was not directly on AI. So I never worked directly, directly on AI. This is the only first time I'm actually working on AI tech, but I think this is uh, really one of the most challenging and the fast pace going. So I think there's a lot of learning and unlearning at the same time happening. Yeah. Well, I think if you look back at you were working on 365 and Dynamics, yeah. Yeah. now they're also full with uh, AI services. So it might have been fast paced at that time Absolutely. as well. I think at this point in time, there is no product in the industry which is not going through this AI transformation. Mm -hmm. So in, in computer science, you always read about these seven layers, right? right? Right from your physical layer to your application layer. And now I think it's time to introduce the eighth layer, which is the AI layer, because all the applications will be wrapped in uh, like the whole AI blanket. And you would only be interacting through the AI in form of agents or directly through any of the GPT bots or something. And finally, those would be the one who would be interacting with your application. So I think we are in midst of that transformation happening across. We had, we could say we're in an AI summer right now, <laughs> things that are going very fast. Do you think at a certain point we might say this time was actually still an AI winter? <laughs> It's, it's uh, yeah, I just want to wait for the time when I would call it AI spring. <laughs> <laughs> but at this point in time, literally, I think before you even get time to wrap your head around to one new tech that has come up, the next amazing thing is already in line. So I think this is the fastest transformation we are seeing across the tech industry. And it's really crazy to just, it's, it's super overwhelming, but at the same time, it's super exciting to, like I want to get my hands dirty on almost everything that's coming up new. And I think that's true with most of the folks who are into this industry or even otherwise. How do you do it to keep up with all those things? I think a couple of things uh, that I generally try to do is if there is possibility to set up these things locally on my machine, just to do that. And one of the things I really like doing is I have this test sample file kind of thing and I have the set of questions I would ask and I would do the same test with all the machines at the same time to see which is performing better because I know there are like a lot of YouTube videos and tutorials about different prompts but I think model performs differently across those mm -hmm. so um, I try and experience it by hands and there are of course some new tech which requires some specific skill sets and like they're experts into mathematical problem but I have not tried those on that. Within Microsoft now, you're on the Azure AI team, specifically working on the part of the document intelligence. Yeah. How do you see that is transforming uh, businesses? Oh, it's actually one of the critical things. So, you know, even before AI came in, I think the, the requirement existed very loud and clear. 
So any of these uh, contents, whether it's documents or maybe audio video and like the, the pace at which humanity is generating content, I think it supersedes any other point in time in history. And with all these documents intelligence, the logical thing that you want to do is you want to extract information out of it because otherwise it's just a huge pile of data, but you don't know what to do with that. And one of the ways to do that is to help a machine understand your data. And that's what actually what we are doing. We are we are building a service and where you can actually bring in any uh, content, whether it's document, audio, video, images, and we help you take all of that data in which is kind of an unstructured format into a more structured format, which you can further use into your REG searches, maybe as part of your agents where the agents can interact with your data. So at the core and the heart of every organization is the data. And the better your machines or systems understand your data, the more you're going to be getting those insights from that data so that you can make use of that in your day to day application and improve your businesses. So I think that that's the reason why the service exists even before this whole I mean, AI is just like hyped up now because now it's being made more much more accessible to the larger audience. But it, it was existing even before then. OK. Any particular examples from, from customers that like, this is really impressing what they've done with the service that we are building? Yeah, I mean, they're like, for example, uh, we have some customers who are working into, let's say, contracts and like you have a teams of uh, lawyers and consultants who need to earlier go to like insane amount of paperwork and references if let's say there's a lawsuit. But with the service, they're able to extract everything and putting into an RG kind of store where it's more like an internal search system. So imagine all your data, data points that your client has submitted are extracted correctly so that you can actually just search through that, hey, what is the claim amount in X? And I think it just saved them, I guess, more than 120 hours of a day for like a person and they were just saying oh my god now a single person can actually do a job of four or five people what they would do so i i think that's crazy and if you see in terms of how we can actually expedite and accelerate the way how we how we've been doing things and processing things in time what for me on um, is quite interesting on products like this is that you don't need to be a data science anymore Absolutely. Everyone can just immediately make use of it with just a little bit of coding skills. Yeah. You don't even need it. If not you use even a not even that. I mean, we have a GUI where you can just simply start uploading stuff and just get it. It's it's that simple to start mm -hmm. with. And uh, like like you said, you don't need to be a prompt engineer or anything. Just like how would you talk to machines? I think with services like this. It has made it a lot more accessible for anybody who is not even from a technical background to talk to machines. And I think that's what we're trying to do with AI. How do you make anyone talk to machine that easily that you, how you are talking to a human, right? So I think that would be the blind test for when then AI or AGI would actually come up that good. Mm. What's the future of a uh, document intelligence? The future for our service particularly is to, of course, enhance and make sure that we make we become like a layer on top of their application where they would need us to process any of the document, any of the content per se, not just documents uh, over and then just get the details and then use it for the agents and the RG. So eventually it would be also an embedded service underneath mm -hmm. is what I'm foreseeing and where you can just for an end customer, it's either to an application you're just trying to interact and get the data from or get the details from the data that you're trying to process. Through. OK, cool. Looks uh, interesting to look forward to to start trying that out. When Absolutely. It's there. <laughs> I, I would I think you have already tried it and you were just sharing that to me that there were some customers who have already tested it out. So uh, and you work with a lot of these customers day in day out. So I'm pretty sure that the new service is also like bringing all the goodness from uh, Gen AI. And then on top of that, we have all the goodness that we have been doing for the, all these years club together. Mm. Especially the combination of extracting that information, then you bring it together with an LLM to, yeah. to get more insights into it is uh, quite practical. <laughs> yeah, and it makes sense, right? I mean, uh, at this point in time, every business wants to leverage the capabilities that these LLMs are bringing in. and. I think there has to be like a 
clear path on how do you really make use of these things into your businesses because the product is amazing the market is there but you have to find that product market fit and i think that's where we are trying to be like if you have to see the venn diagram of the market and the product it's like we are trying to be in the intersection part yeah. of that okay a question i like to ask to people is ai in their day to day usage uh we have many different things that l- are linked to ai people sometimes don't think about it that it's ai um what particular tool or service is something that you really enjoy using that that has some ai built in i think i would give two examples here mm-hmm. the one is these uh, self driving cars i think that's crazy like i was just in in the city we have these uh, self driving cars and you can just take a cab and the experience i had so many anticipations in my mind when i was sitting through and i'm like oh my god this is this is crazy this is some new level thing and i think the other is like when you are at the stores and you can actually just walk through with your hands and face making the payments just like that um it it also raises a lot of question on uh, you know what happens if my identity identity gets stolen my digital identity gets stolen so i think there's a lot of questions around those as well but i think this is super cool on how we are actually using ai for more end to end consumer side of the world apart from the enterprise businesses a lot of data of us is saved so that's a guess why we also need some good regulation about how it's getting used i think it it needs to be the topmost priority for every organization and every government to have very strong restrictions in place because it it can easily be misused to another extent so i think for all the enterprises we have very strict regulations in place when we are we take privacy and data security is very very seriously and as a top thing whenever we are building any of such products the first thing we come comes to mind is that the data and privacy mm. needs to be protected but i think for the consumer side of the world uh, it's still a very uh, i mean it's still growing but i think we need to have those regulations in place for sure and a lot of understanding of for people to understand what is actually happening behind the scenes <laughs> i mean it's such a complicated tech how do you simplify it and how do you make really people understand what they are going through it's more like uh if let's say we are in any conversation and i'm using your browser data to identify what are your likes what are your dislikes even though you're not consenting to it you are in a way consenting to it right so with with ai it's a lot more than that because here it was just more like your search parameters or queries that are what you're searching through but here i know what time do you go to your gym or what time do you do you like to eat or you know very minute details maybe around your medications like you have a bot that reminds you of mm. those things and that's that opens up really a very close scrutiny of your personal life and like for businesses i think it gives them a lot of data point but at the same time for a consumer it's uh, it's tough to be in that place i think you get what i'm trying to say exactly okay well adi thank you very much for your time today we're looking forward to where the team is going forward to and the, the products and i hope to see you more in the future thank you so much for having me over it was really fun chatting with you here and <laughs> i hope uh, we see some great improvements come in a very short time in in the f space great awesome thank you thank you yes.